I know. I know. I, I can't believe I had the motivation, the momentum to make a second episode of this either. I know. I thought I'd be off doing shinier things. But no, I'm here. I'm here for you. And so I have another episode of Here's What I Like About This. I've not changed the title. Nothing new has come to me over the past week. Um, so last week we did an email. This week we're going to do a sales page. And I'll have to be honest with you. When I thought about this series, this was the first thing that came to mind. Um, the ad that I'm about to show you, and a legendary ad by the legendary Joe Sugarman, um, has a special place in my little copywriting heart. There's a reason for that. So when Corona hit last year, when I was a magician and all my gigs magically vanished, I thought now's the time to see if I can make copywriting a thing. So I applied for gigs left, right and centre and I knew I wanted to get into an environment where I get the reps in. I know from magic that the more gigs you do, the more real world experience you get, the better you get. That's kind of deliberate practice. So I applied for agency gigs and the first gig I got was a full time gig. And I knew a lot of people better qualified, better skilled more attractive than me were going to go for this gig. And I knew it was going to be, you know, hundreds of people were going to go for it. And I, I wanted this job so much because I knew I'd get the reps in. So when I sent in my application, I used the advert that we're about to look at as a kind of inspiration. I filmed a video on a golf course with crappy COVID hair, walking my dog, talking about this advert and why I love it so much. So this is, this is the advert I was going to open with last week until I got the email from Troy and I thought, no, this is an easy one. Let's crank on with this. But this is the one that really spawned the idea about this. And I've talked about this on my, on my website before, this idea. But yeah, so this is the one that kind of landed me a gig. So this advert here will always have a kind of special place in my heart. So let's have a look at which advert it actually is. So it's this one. Um, you've probably seen this before if you're a copywriter. It's called Magic Baloney. Uh, for this thing called the Magic Stat. Now, here's what I love about this. I'm going to keep these short. I'm not going to dive massively into this. How many adverts do you know that use the ugliest photo imaginable, throw it right up centre, and, you know, use the word baloney in the headline? and talk about the fact how much they hate the product in the subheadline, and then talk about the main worst features of the thing in the second subheadline. No matter whether you're a designer or a copywriter, this is your main space. And there are copywriters that say, you know, the headline is going to be 80% of the success of your marketing. That's the, that's the point that you sweat over. And here we are using this prime real estate to slag off this product. It's not a great photo. The product is ugly. They call it an ugly case. It's got a stupid name. It made us sick. It's got no digital readout. They're just, they're not even giving you a chance to go, you know, normally what you do is pile on the benefits so that when you get to this lack of features, the readout, the ugly case and the stupid name, by the time you get to that bit, you don't care because by this point you've seen all the benefits. You've imagined, you know, you've dimensionalized how this is going to keep your family safe, how it's going to protect them and how you can go to bed at night knowing that your nearest and dearest, and even the wife, is safe. But no, it's, got, it's using the entire first bit, and including this bit. So we get the headline, we get the subheadline, and we, we get the kind of caption for the photo. And then it's, you're probably expecting our usual, typical sales pitch, but get ready for a shock. For instead of trying to tell you what a great product the Magic Stat Thermostat is, we're gonna tear it apart unmercifully. When we first saw the Magic Stat, we took one look at the name and went, yuck. We took one look at the plastic case and said, how cheap looking. And when we took, looked at the digital readout, it had none. So before the salesman even showed us how it worked, we were totally turned off. Real loser. Again, another great headline. So it's this idea. I'm not going to go too much in this, but I don't want to make these videos massive. But it's the idea that this this piece of copy showed me that adverts don't have to be the same. You don't have to follow an overly templatized approach to this. It doesn't have to be a how to do this with this headline, with the subheadline and this. You can sell something by bringing out its flaws. For example, you know, the size of that image, they could have put a house with like the, 
You know, like when a politician comes out and apologises for doing something weird with a horse and then they're all there with the family like this and the arms around each other. That would have been a great photo for that. Safety, security, family. This is what you're really buying. But no, they shoved the ugly ass box right front and centre so you could see it. It's just crazy. And this is what I liked about it. And this is why I made the video. So this is what I like about copy is the idea that you can take something and go with it. Because if you think about what they're doing here, they're calling out its flaws, which you have to do. And a lot of people are afraid to do this. You don't need a product for this, but take for example, me applying for a copywriting position. I have no experience, I have no samples, I have no testimonials, no credibility, but still I'm applying for this gig and I got the gig. I'm calling out my flaws and this is what you need to do. Don't be afraid of highlighting the stuff that's wrong with your product that you don't like about it because it's that level of kind of honesty that people really appreciate. But there's more going on here because if you think about it, if they didn't mention this, if they didn't mention this magic baloney bit, they didn't have the picture, they didn't tell you there was no digital readout, ugly case, and it was a stupid name, if they didn't tell you any of this, and if they sold you on the benefits of securing your family, and you went, right, it's an alarm. Can you imagine your first thought when you got this in the post as a customer? Even though the magic stat does everything you need it to do, and in fact, later on in the uh, copy, they go into simple to set, just push a button, it does this, it saves you money, it's reliable, easy to set up, but they spend most of the time talking about this. Can you imagine if you got this through the post and you hadn't seen it? what your reaction would be. Can you imagine that unboxing video? You'd be, you'd be appalled and you'd be like, oh, this is, I can't believe we bought this. But here what they're doing is they're kind of future pacing you. So they've talked about the fact that we hated this, but they phrased it like, you'll love the way we hated this until an amazing thing happened. So they're future pacing you. They're kind of spelling out the journey that they had, that you will have too, once you get this. So think about what they've done there. Rather than just, normally when you open the box and saw this, you'd be like, oh God, this is horrible, buy a regret. You know, what's the cooling off period? Can we get our money back? But now you're going on a journey because now if you order this, you've seen it. You've seen the ugly ass picture. So now you're kind of looking forward to it. When this opens, this is, oh, I'm gonna look forward to how much this is gonna stink. Oh my God, can you believe Magic Stat? What a name, it's right up there too. Oh my God. You're kind of looking forward to this kind of thing. So now the flaw is a positive. There's not li they're not lying, they're not cheating, but you're fully aware of it. And now you're kind of looking forward to going on the same journey that they've been on. We hated this until we saw this. And that's exactly what's gonna happen for these people too. And then the advert ends with all the benefits about, you know, it's simple to set, it'll save you money, it's reliable, it does this, it does this, it has all these amazing features but I just love the way it opens with a negative because this is something a lot of people are afraid to do. Whether you're selling a product or a service, people are really afraid to highlight their flaws. They think they have to kind of manipulate their, you know, it's like the person who does this CV and even though they've worked at Tesco for six months stacking shelves, they, they think it, you know, they'll manipulate their CV when they're applying for a job as a NASA scientist going, oh yes, I'm very good working in a high pressure environment. You don't need to do that. If you've got no experience, tell people. Imagine imagine applying for a gig saying, yeah, you'll hate the fact that I've got no experience, no samples. Other people have got all these better testimonials and all this kind of stuff. But you know what? When you realize that I'm the kind of person that can come into your firm without any bad habits, without any bad ideas, without ideas above his station, that I'm the kind of guy who's starting from scratch and who knows he's starting from scratch and is just keen to learn. So. Imagine how that would feel, having somebody like that, a clean whiteboard as opposed to a dodgy whiteboard, a clean whiteboard where you can just tell them what to do and unquestioningly they will do it. There's no ego, there's no sense of pride, there's no nothing getting in the way, there's no attitude. Just a clean, fresh whiteboard slate coming into your office with no bad habits. How good would that be? So you can turn the floor into a positive. You don't need to be weird or manipulative, uh, manipulative about this, but it's just the honesty. And that's what I really like about this. And it's this idea of you don't need to hide your flaws. Be honest about the stuff because they're going to see it anyway. And if you call it out first, then there's no 
ugly surprise waiting. It's like the comedian who gets up on stage, you know, and, and moves the mic to one side and goes, oh, it, the fat comedian gets on stage, moves the microphone and says, I better move this, otherwise you might not be able to see me. They're calling something out. So that's one of the rules in comedy. If there's something weird about you, just make reference to it. Don't leave the audience sat there thinking, does, does he know he's, he's, he's part leopard? Does he know that? Does he know? He doesn't know. You have to call it out. And from there, you use it going forward, just like they've done here. This looks awful. When you unbox this, this will look terrible. But let me tell you the other stuff. So there's no surprise. Cards on the table. And again, it's that underlying idea of honesty. These guys are honest. You know, you're going to buy from this and you're going to buy another advert in this catalogue because, you know, if they hated it, A, it wouldn't be there and B, they'd tell us about it. So it's that kind of underpinning uh, philosophy of honesty and straightforwardness that really counts for a lot. So don't hide your flaws. Don't hide your flaws. So I'll put a link to this in the thing below um, so you can have a look at the gloriousness of itself, um, of yourself rather. Um, but yeah, I hope you found that useful. So that was the ad that I really wanted to kickstart this with, the Joe Sugarman Magic Baloney ad. I just think it's a really good example of how you don't have to do the same thing as everybody else is. Everybody's always shouting louder. I'm better at this, I'm better at this, I'm better at this. Sometimes it's pretty cool to look at your weaknesses and go, what happens if I just announced that? What happens if I told them I was crap at this? Or I couldn't do that? Or that every time I do this, it doesn't work? What if I did that? and then try and turn it into a positive. What would happen then? So it's a good exercise to have a bash at trying and see how it does for you. Um, yeah, so I hope you found that useful. If you're not subscribed to my email club already, join there, there's a whole bunch of goodies there waiting for you. Um, but yeah, if you've got any questions or if you've got any adverts that you'd like me to feature or break down or things you'd like me to talk about or weird hand gestures you'd like me to make, pop them below and I'll try and sort you out.